Hello friends, this is the final part of this series. In this part, we will see how to do a soft keying, adding those details and overall element comping, color grading, rack focus and then the final touch. Let's get started. I'll quickly show how I took the roto and I did soft keying and everything. Now I just took a roto from the mocha. I'll show you my mocha file. Okay, this is my mocha track. I roto this shot in the mocha. This is quite easy one because the shot motion is not really uh, annoying and I exported these shapes. Okay, now I wanted to get these kind of small details here. For that, I simply took the this main footage and I did a color space node here and in color space I just took this srgb 2.20 by that we can get good amount of luma key in the gear and then I masked it only on the edges by taking the edge of that mat we have I took the plate and I masked it I simply did the same thing for this upper area like did the king again call them in the mask similarly I just use all of that fur on the tiger uh, tiger and i merge them together now if i don't do that you can see tiger will be like quite cut out but because of this i'm getting kind of well details on those specific areas these are the most focused areas so i'm just trying to get those kind of hair details or kind of extreme details on the tiger okay, now let's go to the next point adding snow particles in the scene these are the snow particles I have created in Blender long ago and using them as 2D elements for every shots. These are like small particles moving from top to bottom and they have some kind of turbulence in the scene. If you guys want to know how to create this please let me know in the comments below and I can make a complete separate video for how to create this kind of particles in Blender and use them in Nuke. So simply add them on the shot. I'll use a reformat. Let's use a Chronos to control the speed of the particle. They looks too fast at the moment. I will just simply they simply too fast at this point. They are quite slow. They looks too small. I'll just adjust the scale a bit. Just use a transform and make them somewhat like this. Now they are not visible clearly. I will add a grade here and make it look more prominent. Okay, now I can read them in the scene. Okay, now I'll show you how to do the blending. I'll simply take the depth anything again and connect it to plate and just make some adjustments RGB. Uh, this time I'll take the blue values and play with the depth anything. I'll make it somewhat like this and I'll take a grade and just do some tweaks. I'm going to make it kind of blue. And let's merge it on top of the tiger now we have this uh, the depth map or mist map that we see in 3d and we're just cheating in comp using this depth anything node which is really helpful it looks good but now it's too sharp here so i'll just use blur node and i'll play with the opacity i don't want this effect on whole area in the same intensity i want some depth values or change in the intensity of the area of this background and of this tiger I'll connect our merge mask to this uh, square roto around the shot. First, I will take a stencil and connect it to the tiger mat. Now you can see that it's not affect our haze treatment is not affecting the character tweak the values. I'll just keep it half. Now I want to remove this upper part of the haze because that's too bright on this area. Let's take one more stencil node and make it stencil and take a roto and just simply mask it like big soft mask somewhat like this so we can see those kind of black or dark patches now we can see that our mist is on the ground level and as it goes above we don't see much of the mist which is kind of cool and i'll simply take this tiger mat and blur it i'll blur the whole mat if you see the mat the mat is too sharp i'll simply make it blur because now we can see that kind of soft fall off. I will add one more depth treatment, some something like this, but pretty straightforward. I'll simply take the depth anything again. Let's go to the green channels. I'll take a shuffle node, make it green and invert it. So we can see this kind of, again, I'm going to use some grade 
and again I'm just copying this grid and I will paste it here if I see the RGBA you can see it's kind of blue and let's give a slight blur it like 100 and merge it on top of everything but this time I'm going to keep this operation mode on average and I'll keep the values very less around 3.5 or something a overall grid treatment one more time I'll take a blur node I'll give the values around 300 and merge them once again I will use the average mode and mix values around 0.115 so this gives that kind of so that's our overall hazing on the shot like it's like comp blending mode so if you see the this pre comp and our this output it's kind of blended well with those kind of particles and all the environment in the scene now it's time to add some snow particles to the shot let's play it and see it's too fast obviously i will decrease the speed by just using the chronos and make it half of a speed i'll use this now nothing is visible i'll just simply use a gear and a transform just simply make it big i don't want to read those particles more prominent on the face of the tiger so i'll just simply use the multiply and reduce the opacity and make sure that this is on plus mode and i'll use a big soft mask around this character those particles won't be so disturbing on that face give a blue tone to these particles and those looks too bright so i'll just play with the highlights and mid tones use one more grade and just down the multiply a bit they are telling the good story in the shot but i just want to keep them subtle here that's quite good let's add few more particles to the scene to bring more visual interest i had the slow particles but these are too slow so that's why i use this chronos and increase the speed of them i almost double them or more than double change the direction by simply adding mirror and transform i rotated them in the same direction as we see these particles and i added a transform track here because i don't want it to use the card camera and card all the time because that is quite heavy so what i did is i simply took background data and i use the 2d tracker here just track this pg get this 2d tracker and use the transform mask because the shot is going to be very heavy if i just simply keep using this kind of cards where it's not really necessary so if i see that this is like the same track of the shot using a 2d tracker i'll just use this on my other particle as well Okay, I simply added some backdrops to the script and I rendered this whole comp again. Till now we have seen that we have added this kind of particles, 2D, scratches, wound, blood, mist, overall integration and color grading and background. Now we are going to do some rack focus to the shot. I don't want to keep it focused on all the frames. To get the visual interest, I will add some rack focus at the start of the shot. To do that, I can simply add a defocus or I have this magic defocus tool which is very interesting one I will use this again but before that I want to use something in the FG and then I want to put my camera focus on that manually and then after 50 frame my camera focus will shift to the tiger I have some elements like tree branches I want this something like this in the FG let's do a quick key And I'll simply remult it and directly use it on the comp. I'll use a transform. Okay, I wanted something like this. And then my camera focus will be on this. And after, and after 50 frame, camera will shift the focus on the tiger. That's the idea. Let's try to get that kind of effect. On first frame, I will make the depth of field 30 or uh, more than that, 40. That's good. Enable non inform bokeh because I'll give it one so you can get, get this kind of spherical effect and give the keys to the values around frame 75. My focus will shift back to the tiger, so it will be like zero again. So now the tiger is in focus, and the same thing we'll do on the FG object, which is the tree branches, but in an inverted way. Let's crop it because it's too big and use the defocus node here. And at this frame, it will be clear. You don't need any kind of depth of field. I'll just keep it two and go to the frame 50. Let's give the keys again to lock it there. And around frame 75, I'll make sure that our values are around 35. It just, it just visually I'm trying to do. It's not very technically. And now play and see how that looks. 
perfect i'll just keep it like that and now we can do some grading on this front tree branch slightly blue and also make it brighter okay let's not uniformly bright it i will i'll use noise pattern just use a grade and use noise as a mask i wanted to add motion to this fg area uh, this fg tree okay i just quickly cleaned up and i used it this constant around this tree using this constant with the same color i simply added those kind of missing bits now i want to give animation to this kind of this branch but in a different way i just simply don't want to make them uh, jittery or something so for that i'm going to use this branch as a separate one and i'll mask it and then i'll use one more here and just invert it i'll simply merge it here now we have this separate parts here this one and this one they, those both are separate i'll simply add a camera shake remove the center point animation make it no animation keep the center point somewhere around here and play with these intensities i'll I'll just simply see what looks good i just spent some time and saw that these values looks good this kind of motion in the tree i'll simply take this camera shake i'll use this here on this branch as well and since this is a single frame we don't have to think about the time offset i can simply change one of the time here or use time offset and like negative values now if you see those both the branches are playing in a different timing if i don't do that they both will be same i don't want that so just time difference will help you to make feel that those are in different distance and they are like interacting with the wind i use simple transform here from first to last just give them slightly motion that assuming that camera is getting close and same i use the this tracker from the background the 2d tracker and use them on top of everything and then the same defocus that we saw earlier so now shot looks like this with that branch at the starting and the, it will get defocused around somewhere on the 75th frame now we have the rack focus we have to we need to see some of the particles those are close to this distance and they should be quite clearer or less defocused so let's add them as well using the same particle we had i had this one small ones i'll take them and use them again here and let's merge them on top here simply transform them and grade them and i will use a slight defocus on them let's adjust the angle let's decrease the speed by using chronos again i will use the same track again on the particles it is not really necessary but let's use that now we need to animate let's use that same defocus node which is we used for the rack focus and apply them here let's delete this old one and now you can see looks good here like around this frame if i go now these particles will slowly become defocused which is why we are adding this defocus okay i did some cleanup on the file i just added these backdrops i want to make them look very clean in my script now let's try to add some color grading on top of everything we have this kind of look already but let's try to get it more cinematic contrast looks too high i'll make it 0.9 or something let's take down the comma i want to add some bluish or greenish effect for all okay this is quite good let's play with the highlights and the midtones it's getting some kind of snowy mood let's add a vignette here i'll take a grade node i'll make it dark somewhat like this and i'll take a roto node just use the big round roto and invert it and take a blur node and just give blur like this somewhat like this is good i want to add a sharpen to the shot shot looks quite a soft for that i will just simply take a sharpen node 
you can see that when I use the sharpen node we are getting some kind of artifacts on the highlights or all the edges just to fix that you can take a lock to lean node and connect it here and make this to lean to lock and then take one more lock to lean node and just keep it lock to lean now you can see that we are getting this sharpening but we are not getting the that kind of artifacts so if I turn this off and just use the sharpen you can see the difference it's really useful but in the sharpen node I will keep it one and I will play with the amount I'll add chromatic abrasion a bit, make it RGBA and slightly Q uh, scale. Yeah, this is good. Let's keep that like that. And now I wanted to use the cinematic crop. So I'll take the whole shot like down negative 100. Yeah, I want this kind of framing. Let's keep it like this and I will remove this now. Now we have added this. I'll simply add a constant because I want that kind of black bands on my output as well i want to add some overall grain i keep something like this i use this preset i also try to add some cool tone on the shot in the end and did some cinematic looking color grading and this is the final output i hope you guys have learned something new today if something is not really clear please let me know down in the comment and i will try to make a separate video or i'll get a separate topic on that and thanks for the support see you in the next video